What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. And in this next problem, we're told that you borrow $1,000 from your friend and plan to pay him back $20 a day of the principal amount. He charges 1% per day of interest on the outstanding amount of the loan that day. How much total interest do you pay over the course of the loan? So this one, the wording can be a little bit tricky. But once you figure out what you're doing, then it's going to be fairly easy. You just have to plug stuff into a formula. So let's break this down. So what's happening is you're borrowing $1,000 from your friend, right? Let's actually make some rows here. So this is going to be day uh, one. So day one, you're borrowing a principal amount of $1,000 from your friend and what happens is you're going to be paying back twenty dollars a day so of principal so in day two what's going to happen is you're going to pay back twenty dollars of this so what's the principal amount going to be remaining it's going to be 980 and then in day three you're going to pay back twenty dollars so then it's going to be 960 left to pay back at day three and then so on and so on and then what's going to happen is at some day let's call it n um there's going to be twenty dollars left to pay back and then finally you're going to pay back that twenty dollars and then there's going to be no um no more principal left to pay down so let's actually call this just trying to think of how to organize this. Let's maybe call this N for now. I think eventually later on in the question, I'm going to let this be N, but I'll tell you why in a sec. Let's just call this N minus one. This, how many days is it going to take to get to zero? So in addition to paying down the principal over here, you're also going to have to pay interest. And what he's charging you is 1% per day, which is a very high interest rate, by the way. But nevertheless, that's what he's charging you. So he's charging you 1% per day on the amount outstanding on these amounts over here. So the interest in the first day, 1% of 1,000, 0 0.01 times 1,000 would give you $10. And then 1%, 0 0.01 times 980 would be 980. So notice that that interest amount is going down because the principal amount is going down. So then the third day, the interest would be 960, et cetera, et cetera. And then over here, 1% of um, $20 would be 20 cents. And then finally, over here, there's not going to be any interest. So because these are zeros right here, Basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be summing up all of these interest amounts. That's what the question is asking. And because this last value is zero, that's why I was just saying you might as well just let this be n over here because you're just going to be adding zero at the end. So let's get rid of that part right there. All right, so this is going to be n over here. So when they're asking how much total interest do you pay over the course of the loan, you have to sum up all of these values over here, all these interest payments, right? It's just figuring out what they're going to be, setting it up like this. I feel like this is the toughest part because from here, it's just a basic sequence and series question. Notice, first off, this is an arithmetic, right? If we're adding up all these, this is an arithmetic series because notice that the difference is common right, 980 minus 10 is negative 0.2 or 20 cents. 960 minus 980 is negative 20 cents. So in this arithmetic series, the D value is negative uh, 0.2, like that. The first value, A1, is equal to 10. And then we just have to figure out how many of these are there. And we can actually do that either with this over here, 
if you list out all these values, 10, 980, 960, all the way to 0.2, that's an arithmetic sequence. Or you could do with these as well. You could do 1,000, 980, 960, all the way to 20, because that right there is an arithmetic sequence as well. Notice the common difference for this one would be $20. So whichever way you do it, um, whichever way you do, you're still going to get that same n value. And we need that n value to sum all these up. So notice that we're given, let's just work with the decimals over here. So the a n is equal to um, 0 0.2, like that. Right, so after you set it up, you're basically just given these parameters of an arithmetic sequence, and you just have to find s of n. So taking a word problem like this and just breaking it down into parameters like this that you're given, we've done a bunch of questions like this where we're just given these parameters and then we have to solve for something. Once you break it down into this, it's very easy. It's just understanding the question and then breaking it down correspondingly. So from here, we could pretty much just erase everything and just work with, uh, with this over here. So if we were given this information about an arithmetic sequence, and we have to solve S of n. Now, since this is arithmetic, we know that nth term is equal to the first term plus d bracket n minus one. That's for the sequence. And then for a series, if we're gonna add up all the terms, it's gonna be n over two, two a plus d bracket n minus one, or n over two, the first term, plus the last term, like that. And notice that we're actually given the first term and the last term, so we can actually use this, but whichever one we use, we know the first term, this is A1 over here. We know the D value over here, we know the first term, we know the last term, so we can use either or, but in both of them, we don't know what the N value is, and we need the N value to plug it into either one but we know what the last term is. So we can use this sequence formula to find what the n value is, because we know what the last term is, is 0 0.2. The first term is 10 minus 0.2 n minus one. And then from here, to solve for this n value, we could bring the 10 over, so 0.2 minus 10 would give us negative 9.8, and then we'd have negative 0.2 over here. Now we could distribute this negative 0.2 in this bracket, but because we're multiplying, I'm actually gonna divide at this point, like that. Negative 9.8 divided by negative 0.2 would give us positive, uh, let's actually do it here, positive 49, which would give us n minus one, because these cancel out. So then the n value is 50. Right, so there's going to be 50 interest payments. And that makes sense because you borrowed $1,000, you're paying back 20 a day, 1,000 divided by 20 would give you 50. But sometimes the numbers aren't gonna be as obvious as this. So just wanted to go through this process of solving for that. Sometimes they'll even tell you there's gonna be 50 payments, or maybe it won't be till the loan is fully paid off. So maybe they'll say you're making how much interest did you pay over 30 payments, right? Then the N would be 30. But in this case, we calculated the N, it's 50. So from there, we just have to plug it into either or. I'm gonna plug it into this one. So basically S of 50 would equal 50 over two. The first term, which is 10, plus the last term, which is 0 0.2, right? We're summing up all of those interest payments now. And there are 50 interest payments. So this would end up being, what, 25 times 10.2, like that. And so this would give us, what, 25 times 10 would give us 250, 25 times 0.2 would give us five, so this would end up being 255.
right? So that's the total amount of interest that you have to pay, right? So again, with a question like this, maybe draw out what's happening. So I drew out the days, the principal, then the interest on that outstanding principal each day. And then really what we have to do is sum up all those interest payments. So I took those uh, list, that list of interest payments, broke it down into these parameters, and then it just becomes like a regular sequence or series question. It's an arithmetic series that we were looking for. So first we found the end value, how many payments there were, then we summed them all up, 255 is the final answer.